All right, Titans, hello and welcome to Chapter 5, Section 1. In Chapter 5, Section 1, the title is Linear Functions and Graphs. And we actually have four skills for today. The four skills that we're going to learn about here in this teaching video is, number one, the ability to determine the domain and range. Number two, the ability to determine if a relation is a function. Number three, be able to complete an ordered pair when we're given half of an ordered pair. And number four, be able to write an equation given a table. We will jump right in to some definitions. There's three definitions. You're going to want to write these down. I will try to simplify them for you. So don't look at this and be like, wow, it's too much to write. I'm going to simplify this for you. The first one is a relation. And a relation is a pairing between two sets of numbers. So in other words, just write for relation a set of ordered pairs. Okay, it's a set of ordered pairs. I know that handwriting's messy. It's kind of difficult to write on the iPad here. Set of ordered pairs. That's a relation. Uh, with set notation, you're going to see the curly braces. You're going to see those around the uh, ordered pairs on the end there. That's set notation. So anytime we say something is a set, we put it in those. Uh, we put it in those curly braces there. So the first definition is a relation, which is a set of ordered pairs. The second definition is the domain. Anytime you're asked to find the domain, that's your set of x values. Set of x values. The domain is your set of x values. Go ahead and get that in your notes. The domain is the set of x values. Normally with the domain, uh, we'll go ahead and list that least to greatest. And with a domain, if it repeats, we only list each value once. Our last definition is the range. The range is the set of all y values. The set of all the y values. The range is the set of y values. Once again, we like to list them from least to greatest and only list each number once. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs. A domain is the set of the x values. And the range is the set of the y values. And once again, as you can see, they're all sets, so they all go inside set notation, which is the curly braces. All right, we next need to talk about a function. A function is a pairing between two sets of numbers in which each element of the first set is paired with exactly one element of the second set. Let me simplify that for you, folks. A function is a relation, and it's a special type of relation in which every single x value is unique or different. So just think of a function as no x value can be repeated. A function is a special type of relation in which every x value is different, or in other words, unique. So if you look down here below, the first set of ordered pairs, the first relation right here, is a no. Because if you look through that set of ordered pairs, do you guys see how 14 occurs twice? So is it a function? No. In order for it to be a function, every x value must be different. The second one, the answer is yes, because every x value, 4, 5, 7, and 8, every x value is different. So with a function, no x value can be repeated. The y values, they're not as important. They don't matter in this case. Y values can be repeated. They don't have this rule in order to qualify for a function. The rule is just for x values. So to be a function, every x value must be different. All right, let's get into some examples here with uh, the second uh, skill for today, and that is determining whether a set of ordered pairs is a function. So is the set of ordered pairs a function? Number one, yes it is. And the reason it is is because every x value is different. Number two, no. We have a four and a four, an x value is repeated, so therefore it is not a function. So number one is yes. Number two, no, the fours disqualify it. Now, we want you to be able to tell if it's a function when given ordered pairs, when given a graph, and when given an equation. So, let's look at the graph. Anytime you're asked to determine if it's a function and you're given a graph, you don't need to list the ordered pairs and then figure it out. What you can do is simply do what we call the vertical line test. And the vertical line test is taking a vertical line and moving it across the graph from left to right. If the vertical line at any time touches two points on the graph, then it fails the test and it's not a function. 
The vertical line should only touch the graph at one point at all times. So as you can see here, if we were to take this red line and move it from left to right across the graph, the answer would be yes, it is a function because this vertical line will not touch two points at any time. Let's look at a second example. If we were to take this vertical line and run it from left to right across the graph, would it ever touch two points at once? Yep, it would pass the test. It would never touch two points at the same time. So yes, it is a function. Here's a counter example. Here's one that fails the test. This is a no. And the reason this is a no is because as you run the vertical line across the graph, you will see that it touches two points at once. It can't do that. If it touches two points at once, it fails the test and it is not a function. So the answer here would be no, it is not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. So students, whenever determining if a graph is a function, simply run the vertical line test. So just to reiterate with a function here, every x value must be different. This is a function. Every x is different. Over here, not a function. And why is it not a function? Because the 5 goes to the 4, the 5, and the 7. So the 5 repeats, so not a function. So just a quick reminder on the rules for functions. All right, we want to go ahead. All right, the next part we want to get into here is going ahead and looking at ordered pairs and them being solutions. So an equation with two variables can have an obviously infinite number of solutions as we've talked about in class. Solutions to an equation and two variables can be represented by ordered pairs. So here, which point lies on the graph? Or which points? Because remember, it's possible that more than one point can lie on the graph. So in this case, if you look at the equation 2x plus y is equal to 9, you've got to figure out which ordered pairs here could be solutions. So to figure out if an ordered pair is a solution, we're going to go ahead and plug each of them in. So the first one would be 2 times 1 plus 8 equals 9. Is that a true statement? Nope. That would be 10 equals 9. And 10 does not equal 9. So A, not a solution. If we plug in B, 2 times 2 and a half would be 5. 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. So B is a solution. C, if we plug in 0 for X, 9 for Y, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 9 is 9. So C is a solution. And then if we go back to D here, if we plug in 4, 0, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 0 is not 9. So the two ordered pairs that would lie on this graph are B and C. So once again, all I'm doing is taking my x value, plugging it in for x, taking my y value, plugging it in for y, and then seeing if that creates a true statement. If it creates a true statement, then the ordered pair lies on the graph. All right, the next example we have here today is uh, completing each ordered pair, and this goes along with what we just did. They give you half of an ordered pair, and they want you to go ahead and make that ordered pair a solution. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take the value that you know and plug it in. The hardest part here for Algebra 1 students is plugging it in for the correct variable. Here we have the ordered pair 5 and unknown. So that 5 is an x value. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in for x. And then we're going to solve it for y. So 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus what number will give you 21? And most of you can solve that mentally. And that would be 1. So what's my y value? 1. So the ordered pair would be 5, comma 1. The next one, B here, the tough part with this is that students make the mistake of plugging in for the wrong variable. So here we have 4x plus, in this case, 9 is equal to 21. Now we must solve this equation for x, so we would subtract 9 from each side. 21 minus 9 will give us 12. And then when we go ahead and solve that, we would divide both sides by 4. So what's that missing x value? 3. So to complete an ordered pair, you take the value you know, you substitute it, and then you solve the equation for the other value. You can go ahead and try the next two on your own. Uh, those would be two good ones to see if uh, you understand what you're doing there. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide at this time. The last part here today, ladies and gentlemen, is writing an equation for the function. Uh, this is something that we've done already. And you might think, well, I already know how to write equations. Like, for example, this one, you notice that it keeps going up by 
five, it keeps going up by five, it keeps going up by five, it keeps going up by five. That's that constant difference there. So you probably already know, oh, that equation's easy. It's going to be y equals 5x. And then you're probably thinking, well, it starts at 15, so I'm going to put a 15 on the end. But that 15 doesn't correspond with zero. That 15 corresponds with one. So we need to backtrack here. If it keeps going up by five, then at one, it's at 15. So what's it going to be at zero? Well, if we backtrack there, it's going to be 10. So that's why we're going to plug the number 10 in on the end of the equation. So y equals 5x plus 10. So I guess the big teaching point with these tables here in chapter 5, section 1, is you can't always just pick the number on the end to plug on the end of the equation. I mean, the number at the beginning there. In this case, I would get... Excuse me. On the, in this case, I'd get a lot of students that want to put a 15 on the end. Uh, make sure you backtrack and find what the y value is when the x value is zero, so you can determine your starting point, which goes on the end of your equation there. Titans, thanks for listening to Chapter Five, Section One. Uh, we'll go ahead and practice this stuff tomorrow in class. Uh, come ready to, uh, to class with your questions. Uh, please fill out the Google form below. The Google form is very important. It helps us collect information and know what you guys are uh, struggling with after teaching this. So Titans, thanks for your time tonight. Stay classy.